In this appendix, we go through in detail how to code a 2D nonlinear engagement with proportional navigation. Just a reminder that we're simulating the homing loop. We have our target and our pursuer. Both are accelerating, giving rise to some kinematics. Those kinematics are used to determine the pursuer velocity or missile velocity, the line of sight rate, and the closing velocity if true proportional navigation is used. That data is input into the PRONAV law. It produces a desired pursuer acceleration command. The flight control system is assumed perfect so that acceleration commanded is equal to acceleration achieved. And this process continues until the final time of simulation. A quick review of our state equations. Here's our true PRONAV law. It can be pure PRONAV if we just swap out VM, the missile velocity, for the closing velocity, VC. But being true PRONAV, the acceleration command is normal to the line of sight direction or perpendicular to the range vector. I'll refer you to section three for further details on these equations, but just very briefly, the beta dot equation solves for target flight path angle, and then there are eight equations. The R dot equations solve for position of the pursuer target, the V dot velocity, and then we have sines and cosines, which are really making transformations from one coordinate system into the inertial frame. And that's exactly where the nonlinearity in these equations come about from, is transforming from a target coordinate system or a line of sight coordinate system to describe the kinematics all commonly in an inertial coordinate system. We're going to go through the code for the planar engagement in Section 3, Module 3. This is Example 1. The pursuer and target are initially head-on, but the pursuer has a heading error. Now while we show a specific example, note that this script can be modified to explore all sorts of engagements, including others that you've seen in Section 3, Module 3. The state vector in this simulation is composed of nine variables. The first is beta, that's target flight path angle, and then we have target position. We have missile or pursuer positions. We have target velocity and missile or pursuer velocities. So positions and velocities are resolved in inertial coordinate system consistently throughout this simulation. So what do we need to input in order to simulate? Well, I have the variables listed here. First two are related to plots and visualizations. The third is pronav type, whether it's pure or true. Then there's target acceleration, navigation gain, the total time of the simulation, the time step size of integration, initial target heading angle with units of radians, initial target position in the horizontal direction with units of feet, target vertical position, missile horizontal position, missile vertical position initially, all of these are initial values, VT, target velocity magnitude, that's a constant value throughout the simulation, in particular because AT is defined normal to VT. VM, is initial velocity magnitude. It's an initial value in the case that true proportional navigation is selected, and I'll leave it to you to figure out why. So we start by clearing the workspace, clearing all variables, closing all figures, and then moving into our user-defined inputs. The first things relate to what the simulation produces in terms of plots or animations. I'm not gonna go into details about uh, what this is just because there's a lot of script behind this. Um, we're going to focus on the nuts and bolts of the engagement simulation here and then uh, I'll leave it to you to make your own plots for uh, of what variables you want to see or what engagements you want to visualize. All right, pronav type. We're going to start with pure pronav. Engagement parameters, no target acceleration, heading errors initially 20 degrees. 
navigation gain of three, 12 seconds of simulation time, one one hundredth of a second time step size, and then the initial state data. So target heading angle is initially zero. The target's at 40,000 feet in the horizontal direction, 10,000 feet in the vertical direction, and the pursuer is initially at zero in the horizontal direction, and it also at 10,000 feet. The pursuer has 3,000 feet per second velocity and the target 1,000 feet per second. So exactly as we had it in example one, section three, module three, where the pursuer and target would be on a head-on collision course if it were not for this initial 20 degrees of heading error. And now a few initial calculations before we start the integration process. First, resolving the target velocity in the inertial coordinate system, just applying the direction cosine matrix transformation here with the target velocity magnitude and the angle uh, beta in radians. Then our initial relative position and velocities, line of sight angle, missile lead angle, and then missile velocity components resolved in the inertial coordinate system. And note that the heading error is appearing in here because we're taking that heading error into account in our initial missile velocity. Now we have initial data about the pursuer and target so that we can create an initial condition for our kinematics. And here's the vector of initial conditions. Now that we've assembled our initial condition, we enter the integration routine that requires us to compute the pronav input at the current time step, which starting out is just the initial time step. That's line of sight rate and closing velocity if true pronav or if pure, then VC is just replaced with VM. We advance the kinematics forward one time step and the process repeats via the numerical integration routine selected. And in this case, we're using fourth order Rungakutta, but there's nothing sacred about that. I could have selected a first order forward Euler or a trapezoidal method, or an adams bashforth method. RK4 is just a common one and it's accurate, although its stability is not necessarily guaranteed. And then once the engagement simulation is complete, we can proceed to plot or visualize whatever is of interest about that engagement for our purposes. Going back to the code, we'll go through the numerical integration process. Here's our discretized timeline. And then I'm gonna pre-allocate the solution matrix for the speed of the script. If you don't do this, that is if you don't define a contiguous block of memory in your computer, then at each time step, the computer has to search for new memory to make a new block of increasing size. And that dramatically slows down your computations. So if you can determine the size of a solution matrix beforehand, before computing for speed, it's highly preferable that that memory is allocated and then held constant and used and reused as time is integrated forward. Now assigning the initial condition to the solution matrix. And then the next step is starting now the integration routine with our fourth order Rungakutta solver. Now the way this works is we have an index J that counts from one to NT minus one. TJ one is our initial time and starting with the initial time, we apply the fourth order Rungakutta routine to estimate the solution to the state at the next time step, that's TJ plus one. So the output of the fourth order Rungakutta is a prediction of the next time step at line 124. And then that is stored in line 125 in the solution vector in the J plus one column. And the process continues until we get to NT minus one, where the Rungakutta solver gives us the solution at 
NT or TF and the final solution is stored in the solution matrix. Now the RK4 solver is applied to this script nlin pronav sim. So these are the x dot equals f of x equations that govern the 2D engagement. Here we are now in that script where the first thing I have are pointers to the individual states contained in the variable y. Using a pointer as opposed to hard coding an index into a variable to select something is a good way to avoid misindexing a variable, that is, selecting an incorrect state because we put in the wrong number. Instead, we input the pointer and we select the state we want without error. Before we get to the target kinematics, we need to compute target velocity magnitude, also relative positions and velocities, and those in particular go into lambda dot and BC, the proportional navigation inputs. And finally, our kinematic equations, which will be evaluated at each time step. Here's our state vector for reference positions, velocities. Then the final two equations, that's the missile velocity state equations, are dependent on whether true or pure pronav was selected. If it's true, then we have closing velocity and we compute the right-hand side as follows. If it's pure, then we have the missile velocity and we have uh, the following right-hand side. So that's the NLIN PRONAV script. And then back to our driver, once that's completed, we go on to post-processing the simulation results. Now you know the details of the code behind the engagement. Let's run it. Direct post-processing of the solution data allows us to plot many of the key variables associated with this engagement. Here's range versus time, the line of sight rate versus time, closing velocity, the acceleration commanded by the PRONAV law, and then the vertical and horizontal position of the pursuer and target. Refer to section three for further details on the analysis and theory of this engagement. This is Missile Guidance Fundamentals, Appendix A.